Good morning to you all. Right, worshipful master, we give you a very warm welcome from Lord Snegail and all members and members of any other lords who've joined with us today. This is your mother church and uh, it's nice to have you on Mother's Day. And uh, indeed, uh, as it is Mother's Day, as many of you know, um, it's nice to welcome you all to our service today. And we hope that you'll enjoy being with us um, as brothers in our service today. Let us uh, sing our first hymn, which is number 10. Hymn number 10. Christ is made the sure foundation. Welcome again to worshipping with us today, and we welcome uh, the right worshipful master and the brothers of Lord Snegail with us as well. And we pray that you'll enjoy our service today as we gather together. The notices are that the services next Sunday will be 10 o'clock and 11:30 for the English. There will be no prayer meeting tomorrow evening. 
due to the fact because uh, to accommodate the annual audit of all the churches. If anyone wishes to become a communicant member of the congregation can speak to me or to indeed one of the office bearers of the church. And the same if anybody requires baptism, if they could let us know, or one of the elders as well. The stated annual meeting will be held on Thursday, the 26th of March at 7.30, and the following edict is to be read. Edict to be read on Sunday the 15th of March and Sunday the 22nd of March. Notice is hereby given that the annual stated meeting of the congregation will be held on Thursday the 26th of March 2015 in the lower hall of the church at 7.30. The purpose of the meeting is to receive the financial report for 2014 and to hold the required elections for the congregational board. Nominees to fill the vacancies on the board must be communicant members aged 18 and over and uh, should have a proposer and seconder if possible. Names of nominees should be given to the clerk of the board before the meeting. That doesn't mean that anybody can't become a member of the church before the age of 18. That is different altogether. But to be a member of the board, you have to be 18. You can be a member of the church younger than that if you wish to become a member of the church. And this now has to be signed in front of the congregation. And the clerk of the board will also sign it. The annual divine service of Lord Gale is now included in our morning service today. The Guild have been invited to join Renfield St Stephen's Guild at their daffodil tea on Friday the 20th of March at 1.30 and all are welcome to attend. If anybody is ill or requests a uh, visit at any time, please do not hesitate to phone me and whether you're a member of the congregation or not and you'd like a visit, don't hesitate to contact me at any time. The sanctuary is open for private prayer and contemplation on Thursday at 12 noon till 2. And there is also the Presbytery Clan, which will be on Friday the 24th of April. This will be held in the Church of Scotland offices at 121 George Street, and it's open to the public if anybody wishes to attend. There's a conference for the promotion of the Gaelic language within the church, and that's going to be held in the Throne Church, Saturday the 21st of March. You're all welcome. And there is a lunch supplied. Robert Flett is the organiser of the TV radio broadcaster, Cathy MacDonald, and will be led also by the moderator designate, the Reverend Dr. Angus Morrison. And then Margaret Mary Murray, who is to lead the BBC Alapa since 2008, will talk about opportunities for Gaelic speakers within the Gaelic broadcasting environment, radio and TV. The Reverend John Urquhart, who is uh, indeed uh, to talk about his work developing contemporary and traditional Gaelic worship materials in partnership with So More Ostak. And Donald Walker, the senior Scotsman journalist and church elder, who also sits on the Church of Scotland Communications Group, will talk about the written press. And then Professor Donald Meek will also be speaking. So if anybody wishes to go to that, it's on Saturday, even if you go for an hour or something, um, it's from 10 o'clock until 4 p.m. And these are the intimations that I have to hand. Now, as this is Mother's Day, and a very important day, um, the congregation now will give flowers to, um, indeed, the parents. Maybe Mrs. Is Mrs. McKeegan coming, or who's coming to give the flowers?
Well, thank you very much, and uh, I hope you've all got one, and if not, there are still some left there for you. So let's sing our next hymn, which is hymn number 367, For the Beauty of the Earth.
Judges chapter 14, verses 1 to 11. Samson went down to Timnah and saw that there was a young Philistine woman. When he returned, he said to his father and mother, I have seen a Philistine woman in Timnah. Now get her for me as my wife. His father and mother replied, Isn't there an acceptable woman among your relatives or among all our people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Samson said to his father, Get her for me. She's the right one for me. His parents did not know that this was from the Lord, who was seeking an occasion to confront the Philistines. For at that time they were ruling over Israel. Samson went down to Timnah together with his father and mother. As they approached the vineyards of Tim Timnah, suddenly a, one, a young lion came roaring towards him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him in power so that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands as he might have torn a young goat. But he told neither his father nor his mother what he had done. Then he went down and talked with the woman, and he liked her. Sometime later, when he, came, when he went back to marry her, he returned aside to look at the, the lion's carcass. In it was a swarm of bees and some honey, which he scooped out with his hands and ate as he went along. When he rejoined his parents, he gave them some, and they too ate it. But he did not tell them that he had taken the honey from the lion's carcass. Now his father went down to see the woman, and Samson made a feast there, as was customary for the bridegrooms. When he appeared, he was given thirty companions. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal and ever merciful God, we give you thanks for the blessings of gathering in your house on another day, for the wonderful blessing of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came into the world to die on that wonderful cross for poor sinners such as we are. We thank you that there is power, wonder-working power, in the blood of the Lamb to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us. And as we gather to today, we pray for an outpouring of your Spirit to be upon us, that we may indeed be refreshed in our souls and in our lives by gathering in your house. We give you thanks for the blessings of Lord Nigel with us today in our worship. We pray that you'd look after each one of them in their role and office and function. And that you would bless their families and all connected with them in the world and do for them each one far above what we can ask or seek. We thank you for the work that they do, even although sometimes it's not recognized as it should be. And we pray that God would indeed uh, bless that to each one of them in their lives and in their work here in the world. We uh, pray for uh, this day, which is a Mother's Day, and some have lost their mother and grieve the memory today. Others have their mother with them, and a mother's heart is as deep as the ocean, and we know that uh, the love goes beyond uh, uh, all boundaries, and it goes that extra mile. So today we gather in your house seeking to worship and praise your holy name and we pray that uh, this worship would uh, be uh, an encouragement to us and a motivation for each one of us. If there is anybody who is worried or concerned about their health or about any other issue, we bring it before you in prayer and we ask you to hear each one and to listen to them and to bless them we pray and we pray for those uh, who are in hospital and who are very low that god would bless them and keep them and watch over them at this time we thank you for this privilege today 
and we ask that your blessing would be upon us as we pray together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing now in our next hymn, which is 682. Hymn number 682. Lead kindly light. Judges chapter 14, verses 12 to 20. Let me tell you a riddle, Samson said to them. If you can give me the answer within the seven, seven days of the feast, I will give you 30 linen garments and 30 sets of clothes. If you can't tell me the answer, you must give me 30 linen garments and 30 sets of clothes. Tell us your riddle, they said. Let's hear it. He replied, Out of the eater, something to eat, out of the strong, something sweet. For three days they could not give the answer. On the fourth day, they said to Samson's wife, coax your husband into explaining the riddle for us, or we will burn you and your father's household to death. Did you invite us here to rob us? Then Samson's wife threw herself on him, sobbing. You hate me, you don't really love me. You've given my people a riddle but you haven't told us the answer. I haven't even explained it to my father or mother, he replied. 
so why should I explain it to you? She cried the whole seven days of the feast. So on the seventh day he finally told her, because she continued to press him. She in turn explained the riddle to her people. Before sunset on the seventh day of the men of the town said to him, What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? Samson said to them, If you had not plied with my heifer, you would not have solved my riddle. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon him in power. He went down to Ashkelon, struck down thirty of their men, stripped them of their belongings and gave them their clothes to those who had explained the riddle. Burning with anger, he went up to his father's house and Samson's wife was giving to the friend who had attended him at his wedding. God bless this reading from this Holy Bible. Well, thank you very much to the Master of the Lodge, a very talented young man who we know who's played the pipes for us here on many occasions. And uh, not only that, he's also a good singer, I hear. And uh, he's also talented at dancing, so he's quite a gifted man. And now I think we might be able to put him onto a reader's list as well. So, um, you know, that's uh, something that you just do once you do it. And here we get you onto the list. So we certainly, we thank you for your readings today. Um, we will now uplift the offering. And if those who are going to pipe during the offering could come forward. Gracious and ever merciful God, we give you thanks for this offering today. It can never compare with the offering that you gave us in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So accept these gifts, we pray, 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now sing um, Work for the Night is Coming. The hymn is on the pew leaflet. If you, have you all got one? Yes. It's on the pew leaflet. It's in section 10. Work for the Night is Coming. And we can sing this hymn to God's praise. now turn for a short time to um, Judges chapter 14 and verse 14. He replied, out of the eater something to eat, and out of the strong something sweet. This is a riddle, but it's also a riddle that's circulating quite a lot among us in the syrup tin of Tate and Lyle. Out of the strong came forth sweetness. Abraham Lyle was a Jew and they experienced great persecution in his life and indeed went through quite a lot in his life. And many of you know during the war um, they were indeed uh, persecuted uh, quite a bit as well. I actually saw some of the brethren wearing the forget-me-not. Uh, when you came in today and uh, often that was a sign of recognition for one another in the brothers to stand hand in hand which is indeed something very important for us to do. Samson's name means sun-like, one who shone with warmth healing and brightness. The sun is necessary for the fruit to ripen as the rain is to indeed water the earth. 
In God's wonderful plan, he gave us light even from the beginning. God said, let there be light. Now the sun can cause ill health too. Sunstroke. Did you know that was in the Bible? It's in 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 8. It can cause sunstroke. Although there is healing properties within the sun, it can also cause harm. But it is a great creation that God hath done. The sun also was obedient because you remember it stood in the sky and it wouldn't move. It was like what we call nowadays an eclipse. And it was also darkened at the time of Christ's crucifixion on the cross. This uh, particular book is the seventh book in the canon of scripture. And uh, as we know, it is an important uh, book with uh, indeed many um, sad events taking place in the book of Judges. Doubt sees the obstacles and faith sees the way. Doubt sees the darksome nights and faith sees the day. Doubt dreads to take the step and faith soars on high. Doubt whispers who believes and faith answers I. God wanted to humble the power of the Philistines. It was a mighty power and he wanted to humble them. And in a little town of Sora, there dwelt a family of Manoah who was of the tribe of Dan. Manoah was Samson's father and he was a child of a gift given by God. They were given instructions as to the lifestyle of the child. Not that they always adhered to that lifestyle, but they were given instructions that they had to change this because it was a, a gift and a special child and therefore they had to adhere to this jury, um, this child's birth and upbringing. It's very difficult sometimes when we're given instructions and rules to keep to them. Doctors give us instructions all the time and we, we um, don't agree with them and we don't keep them and we break them constantly. As indeed mothers give um, each child um, instructions for their life every day. And sometimes we don't listen and sometimes we don't take it in and sometimes we don't appreciate it maybe until our mothers have gone mothers do care and mothers protect us and look after us and there's nobody who can keep the secrets of your heart more than your mother because of the love she has for you she will always protect you and be there for us and I'm sure there isn't anybody in here who's not going to say to me today, I have to confess she was right, although at one time you didn't believe that they were right, but there are times when the mothers are right and do know. They're dangerous because they've got a built-in antenna and they indeed know what you're up to, so they can read us better than we can read ourselves sometimes because uh, uh, mothers do know us very, very well. So beware, just a warning of danger. I have to tread very carefully with these women today because otherwise I might get uh, indeed uh, uh, lynched after the service. You can see also that on this particular situation that uh, they were given instructions, as I said, they were 40 years at the hands of the Philistines suffering great danger. And then God gave them this great hope. And when the angel of the Lord came and told them they were going to have a child, they decided to give the angel of the Lord a gift. But the angel of the Lord said to them, don't give me the gift, give the Lord the gift. And that's something that we must remember that's important. Give the Lord the offering and the gift. So they made an offering unto the Lord and they gave thanks to the Lord for the gift. 
And what happened? The angel ascended up from the offering and they never saw the angel again. The angel is a messenger that can come and give you a message. People get revelations and insights into things that they can see wonderful things happening in their lives. Now when Samson was born, the Lord blessed him and the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. And then he saw this woman who he wanted to be his wife. And you'll never believe it, she was a Philistine, the very enemy that was against him. And his parents tried to put him off, but he wouldn't listen. But God had a plan that this woman was right for him. Although, unfortunately, um, the situation was very difficult in his life. And with all the discouragements, he went ahead, as you can see in verse 4, with the plan. But on his way, he was confronted with a challenge and a test of a roaring lion. But Samson was a very strong man, and he killed the lion with his bare hands. He didn't tell his parents the danger he was in or what took place. Now, there isn't anybody in here who's going to tell me that they told everything to their parents, because they didn't. We all keep things away from them, don't we? To protect them, and they keep things for us to protect them. We're not expected to tell things, and we shouldn't be telling things that we're not supposed to. Because people who don't understand things are not going to make good use of it, but they are going to tear it apart and destroy something that is good. And this woman, Her power, I don't know what happened there, did everything in her power to um, find out this great secret. So when the riddle had been given, she cried and she accused him, you don't really love me, if you really loved me you would tell me what this really is. And he gave in to pressure. You do not give in to pressure. Your gut instincts can tell you sometimes, do not say, do not disclose, and you should listen to that and the wisdom of other people who have gone before you. Now I'm sure, brothers, you will know the importance of the values that you hold dear. And these important values are not values that you can sometimes disclose to other people. And very often all the good work that you do, very few people know about it. Because you don't do it for praise or self-glory. You do it because you care. And that's the important value of it. Just because people don't know and people don't understand doesn't make it wrong. So we must understand that there are things that we should not disclose even under pressure or duress and we should know better than don't ask. Did you ever hear the phrase, leave well alone? And don't go looking for what you don't want to find. This test was indeed uh, in front of him with the lion. And then he went on the journey back to get the Philistine wife. And in the carcass of the lion was honey. He took the honey and he shared it with his parents, but he didn't tell his parents that it nearly cost him his life. So sometimes in that silence you can reap the benefits 
of a price that somebody else paid. And that's what we do in Christ. We reap the benefit that Christ paid on the cross for us, the salvation of our souls, and he died for our sins on the cross. And we can reap these benefits so much in our lives. He didn't tell the danger he was in, and he didn't tell, but he shared the blessing. Whatever the danger you and I are in our lives, we can never tell the danger that we're in, but we can share the blessing that we got out of it. And that's the important thing. We can share our experiences. Every experience that we have in life are very valuable. And it's important to listen to people of learning and understanding and experience in life to teach us. And all the young brethren can learn from uh, your senior brethren in the lodge, uh, indeed wisdom and understanding. And if you listen to them, you will learn so much more rather than knowing it all. We should feel that we know nothing. We are learners every day and we should respect our senior um, elders so that we can respect and learn from them the disciplines that are important to make us the people we are and to be seen in the light and warmth of daylight. And these things are so valuable for every one of us. That's so we value our things in life. So they were asked to find out what this riddle meant. And they were indeed understood that if not, they would have to give 30 linen garments and 30 sets of clothes. And if not, they'd have to give it to him. It came with a price. Everything comes with a price. And everything comes at a cost. Nothing is free. It comes at a price and a cost. So we must learn to listen and take in what we're told. And she coaxed and coaxed and he gave in. And he even said, why should I tell you? I never told my father and mother, so why should I tell you? And yet he did. You see, what is sweeter than honey and what is stronger than a liar? Some of the experiences we have in life are very difficult. He wanted revenge, so he got 300 foxes, tied their tails together with a new rope. Now, a new rope is much stronger than an old one. And the vineyards and the olive yards and the cornfields were burnt. He wanted revenge and he got revenge. When they found out it was Samson, they took revenge and killed his wife and family. And Samson told them, I will take revenge on you. They went after him to take him prisoner to pay for what he did. And do you know that it was his own people that took him as a prisoner? and gave him over, betrayed by his own brothers. But the Lord was betrayed by his own brothers, wasn't he? He said that the worst thing that ever happened to him, that he was hurt in the house of his friends. Brothers, don't hurt one another. Support one another. Be there for one another. No matter what the cost or the price is. Loyalty is important and is valuable because if you don't who else is going to support you the same as anybody in the church we need to be there and support one another and protect one another in the world and keep one another safe always in the world so indeed he was betrayed and how amazing that these experience took place. There was a riddle once given by an old minister I once heard in Lewis. And he said, 
There's a commodity, he says, on everybody's table that reminds us of judgment. What is it? Do you want to know the answer? Solid. <laughs> Lot's wife was turned into a pillar of solid. It was an old minister I heard telling that. And I'm sure my good friend from Lewis here will remember the olden days when they used to talk about the old riddles instead of watching television. And it was like a, a pastime at night when you used to sit round the fire and they used to give us riddles. I'm sure Donnie will remember quite a lot of these in his younger days when they used to speak about the, the, the little riddles uh, when they used to talk them round the fire and you had to work out what the answer was. They were like puzzles. And riddles are in the Bible. These things are given to us so that we may learn. Proverbs are full of them. But it's to give us wisdom and to keep us working in our minds. So don't be afraid. Out of the strong comes forth sweetness. You know, friends, out of the bitter experiences of your life, and sometimes, you know, you might be going through a very difficult time at the moment. I don't know a lot of you anyway, and I don't know anything personal about any of you. I make that a rule because that gives me the freedom to preach. It's none of my business to know anything personal about anybody. I have enough to contend with in my own life, unless you so wish to, to discuss that with me. But then when you look at your situation, and you look at the difficulty and the trial that you're facing in your life, remember, at the end of the day, God came to help Samson, and he conquered the enemy. So when the Lord is for you, who can be against you? He will prosper with you in life, and he will support you and guide you and guard you, no matter what lies ahead of you. Set your trust upon him and he will take care of you. Amen. May God bless these thoughts to us uh, together today. Let us conclude by singing in hymn number 484, Courage, brother, do not stumble.